Good afternoon, everybody. There are much bigger weather pattern changes coming to the United States by early next week as the overall weather pattern changes with much colder temperatures and stormier weather for the upper Midwest and for the Midwest with much warmer and quieter weather for much of the West Coast of the United States. So in this video, we'll be breaking down all those details. Now to start off the video, here's a look at the latest Goes East satellite imagery over the entire United States. This is courtesy of College DuPage. Link in the description below this video. And as we can see, there are a couple of active weather systems propagating across the United States for the afternoon here of Wednesday, November the 13th. We have our system right here over the Midwest all the way from the Gulf Coast, all the way up into Minnesota and Wisconsin. This is bringing the threat of severe weather as the Storm Prediction Center has issued a slight risk for severe weather today over the Deep South, driven by a risk for tornadoes and a risk for some gusty winds as well. But that's not all. The Storm Prediction Center has issued a 5% risk for damaging winds across northwestern California, western Oregon, and western Washington for this afternoon due to some thunderstorms that could contain some very strong damaging winds. But in between all of this, there is some breaks in the clouds, and that is seen over the high plains of the United States and over the northeast where we have upper level ridging. There is sinking air aloft that helps dry out the air adiabatically and where I have these two areas circled in is where you're seeing some sunny skies although some cooler temperatures thanks to northwesterly flow helping to advance some cooler air into the region but otherwise not too bad of your Wednesday enjoying some blue skies now this is all snow down here in white that's over northern New Mexico part of that winter storm that we had last week that dumped feet of snowfall that is still being seen here on the satellite imagery it's going to take a long time for it to melt because with the pattern change coming, it's probably not going to melt much more from here on out. Now, with that being said, let's get into my favorite part of this video, and that is your weather forecast over the next seven days to 10 days. Let's look at the European model, the ECMWF, and what you're looking at here is clearly where it's raining, where it's snowing, and where there's nothing at all. And that's where we have blue skies, maybe some high clouds. And that's the two areas that I've circled in. So not much going on there, but the pattern does change, of course, right? It's not clear all the time for one given location. And so going forward here over the next 24 to 36 hours, you can see that, yes, there will be rain moving into the northeast, but no snow. No concerns for any shoveling with that snow at all. That's because temperatures are going to be above average. Not much cold air advecting into the system. So this is modified cooler air coming in out of the north. And so therefore, snowfall is not going to be a whole big problem at all. Versus if you're in the Pacific Northwest and California, it's going to be a different story. You're going to have high elevation snow, cooler temperatures than normal, and the chances for more rain for the lower elevations and the continuation for some instability. That instability is going to be in the form of maybe some pop-up thunderstorms each afternoon because as you have cold air aloft moving over warmer air from the land, the land heats up, you destabilize the atmosphere, and that leads to some thunderstorm buildups in the afternoon. And that's going to be the case all the way through Friday, so some showers, some thunderstorm concerns. But look at this, some snow for the higher elevations and also for the Great Basin of Nevada. Going to see some snow by Friday into Saturday. So if you're going to Reno, make sure you check in with Caltrans for the latest road conditions. But otherwise, for much of the Midwest, for my birthday, by the way, my birthday is here. Looks pretty good if you all want to celebrate with me virtually. I'm not going to be doing anything on YouTube. Actually, we might be doing something. I'll have to figure that all out on my YouTube channel. But it looks pretty good here for much of the lower 48 with nothing going on, but that's not going to last very long. By Sunday, by Monday next week, another system. This is similar to the big snow wabosh like system that we had literally last week. Um, this okay, because today's Wednesday, so it happened on Thursday and Friday last week with all that snow. Similar track here, but less cold air advection. So, yes, the highest elevations will get the snow, but more, less snow for the lower elevations here of western Texas. And that's going to be moving into the upper Midwest. So, more rainfall is expected. And then, guess what? When that cooler air from Canada gets involved, 
yeah, the system really transitions. It goes from rain all the way to snow. It could be a lot of snow out of this one with ground blizzard conditions, some blizzard whiteout conditions due to those strong winds. Look at those isobars. Really, really, really tight. And then, of course, we're not making a video at all on this today for many reasons. Most of the models have downtrended on our area of disturbed weather. I'm aware of it in the Caribbean. It is potential tropical cyclone number 19. We're not going to talk about that today because, again, all the models have downtrended on this. But if it survives and moves into the Gulf, it could um, bring quite a bit of rainfall and some heavier weather conditions for Florida and maybe for portions of the Gulf Coast. But really not too concerned about that today since all of our models have downtrended. And then that basically... Um, moves out of the picture and then we go back towards looking at this big upper level low pressure system for the 22nd and the 23rd of november just in time for your first um for your thanksgiving week i should say not day uh, because thanksgiving's not until the 28th of november but yeah much cooler weather coming back in for the upper midwest now when looking at those temperatures yes big changes are coming i want to make it clear in this video folks that's what this video is going to be mainly about big weather pattern changes coming so we're going to fast forward this temperatures are going to be above average for the northern plains there's not much cold air to worry about and as we go over the next several days you can see it is going to be really warm even for southern texas for this weekend Temperatures are going to be in the upper 70s to lower 80s, even some upper 80s in far western Texas. That's pretty unusual for this time of the year, and it's going to continue. Very warm weather will continue for the deep south for the Midwest, but don't get too comfortable. By the time we go into the 21st and the 22nd, that's when much of the colder air will be moving in. Now, your temperature anomalies are pretty much straightforward. Anything in orange, red is above average temperatures. Anything in light blue to darker blue to green is below average temperatures. All right. So going forward, you can see much of the Intermountain West has been cold. And it's going to remain that way all the way through this weekend. So yes, my birthday, Friday, we might have some stormy weather here. Love it. Doesn't rain very often on my birthday, but it's going to rain this go around and it's going to be cooler than average for my birthday while the Midwest is going to see above average temperatures. And I mean pretty significantly by the 19th through the 20th of November. This is a one day average temperature anomaly. This is pretty significant. Temperature is going to be 15 to 20 degrees above normal. That is ridiculous. That is uncomfortable and it's not going to last very long because look at what comes in behind it. Much colder temperatures. In fact, temperatures in Texas could be anywhere between 10 to 15 degrees below average. Now, why is the weather pattern going to be pretty wild? Well, you can blame it on the jet stream. This is the 500 millibar jet stream forecast. You can see Here's that trough. That's why you're getting some disturbing weather in your area. Short wave ridge moves on through, right? And this ridge is going to be the more dominant future for a while because there's a trough moving into California. This is two days out, by the way. And you can see there it is right there. Some area of disturbed weather moving into California. Much below average temperatures, too, because of that um, area of disturbed weather. And this is going to continue all the way through the next five days. You can see uh, more large-scale ridging over the southeast and the eastern portion of the United States with troughing moving north of that ridge. Here's where the pattern does change. This is going to start it right here. This trough over New Mexico is going to eject into the high plains. And you can see how that pans out there in about six days. And then look what happens. Then a deep trough moves on through. And so this is 10 days out, by the way, 10 days out into the forecast. And look at how crazy this jet stream actually is. Pretty, pretty crazy to say the least. Big, big trough. That's a 531 decameter height line contour. And then this continues 522. Boy, Ethan B, you're going to be like, holy cow, this is pretty significant. And then way far out in the future, that's what it's looking like. Snowfall forecast over the next seven days. Don't go beyond seven days for many reasons. You can see some of the northern plains could get maybe about three to six inches, maybe some isolated areas greater than six inches of snow. For the Intermountain West of California, for the Pacific Northwest, you might end up getting at least one to three feet of snowfall. Again, for the higher elevations, get the most snow. For the lower elevations, you might get only a dusting or less of snow. 
When you take a look at the rainfall forecast over the next 7 to 10 days, you can see how much rainfall is expected. Again, uh, very important down here in Florida could get either very little or very much needed rain. Well, you don't really need any more rain, but you could use more. Um, and then again, that depends on what depression or uh, PTC-19 does. If it is able to survive the land interaction and move north, it could become a bigger problem for Florida. But if it hits land down there in Nicaragua and Honduras, uh, not Nicaragua, yeah, wait, Guatemala and Honduras, oh wait, Nicaragua, I got it right, right? Nicaragua and Honduras, um, it will likely get torn apart. The Pacific Northwest, more straightforward, more rain on the way before it dries out. So you're looking at another maybe two to four inches of rainfall for your area. And for the Midwest, we're looking at a lot more rainfall for the Northern Plains included there with maybe one to three inches of additional rainfall. Some of it will be in the form of snow, however. If you found this video really helpful, detailed, and informative, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the like button, and share this video with your family and friends on social media. As always, have a great rest of your Wednesday on the 13th day of November here. My birthday is in a couple of days. I'll do what I can. I should have a video out, one more video out tomorrow before I travel to Santa Cruz to see the King Tides. I don't know if you guys have seen the King Tides. Let me know if you have in the comment section a way to interact here. But anyways, thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow.